got another vintage Philips set here and this one's probably from mid 50s I would say there's the cabinet and as you can see it's just too far gone Yeah, nature is has taken care of this cabinet unfortunately because it's a very very good looking TV or it was massive speaker there got a tweeter there or tuner Got yeah, there four rectifier tubes in parallel. This is our vertical output transformer. Big beefy piece of iron there. Flyback is visually intact. There's our damper and horizontal output. Got our 50s style aluminium yoke and this CRT is brand new that's absolutely perfect but has a major problem this is a doorbell transformer and this was installed in the TV and this is because this CRT has an intermittent heated cathode short so they put in that thing to kind of make it usable so I'm here looking at this and I, I don't know what to do with this don't know if I should waste my time on it or move on to something else. And this TV has a story which I am not proud of. Uh, the guy was advertising it and he was asking 200 euros for this, which is ridiculous. It's worth hardly anything, especially around here because people only, only want vintage TVs for decoration. So they are interested in the cabinet and the way it looks and this is just totally disintegrating. So it's worthless. For me it's worth something because of the CRT, although it's bad. I didn't knew when I bought it. CRT evolves, uh, the HD over wine is useful for other sets. Maybe I can use the flyback secondary, uh, the primary. Uh, I got a yoke here, I got the vertical output transformer, have a good tuner, or I don't know if it's good, but we got potentiometers, these quality vintage style potentiometers with metal case are getting hard to find and expensive, we got dropping resistors, VDRs, we got lots of useful parts on this. And this TV appears like it's very low hour TV. I don't see one single replacement component. All the capacitors are the original black tar ones that like to shorten blow up. I don't see any evidence of service. So the, this was pro this probably developed the heated cathode shirt and then it was stored until now. So it's too bad. And like I was saying, the story behind this is one that I'm not proud of. I'm going to tell you anyway. So the guy was asking 200 euros and I said, hey, I'll give you 40 because the cabinet 
appears to be in bad shape although on the pictures he took he kind of put it in an angle and uh, the lighting that he used we couldn't see the woodworm I could see the cracked varnish but I could not see this woodworm damage so I said hey I'll offer you 40 and I'll offer you another vintage TV the guy said hey as long as it's antique because they like to use that word around here as long as it's antique I'm interested and I said hey well that's strange nobody accepts any trades around here so I got a little bit suspicious but yeah. so I told the guy hey uh, beware that my TV is not working and it's not repairable it's just a novelty it's just for display do you have any problems with that and the guy said no don't have any problems with that so I came around here at the shop I got a bunch of sets there for parts that are not repairable and I chose I chose a good cabinet I chose a bad CRT I've put in a chassis where I removed some key components that I might need I've removed all the valves and I put all bad valves like this one white cap tubes cracked tubes whatnot uh, what else did I do? I've put in a bad speaker. I've basically took everything that was interesting for me out of the TV and remounted it to make it look intact, to make it be a nice display piece. And I, I said to the guy that it, it was not repairable. He didn't want to know any details. If he had asked me, I would have told him, hey, it's missing some parts, the valves are bad, CRT is bad, but he didn't ask me, he didn't want to know about any details. So I went to grab this, it was a long drive, and I arrived there at night. And the guy had the TV on the back of his van, it was in a bit of a rush, so I just dropped my TV, didn't want to take a look at my TV, which I, I found a bit strange put my TV on his van, he put his TV on my van, I gave him the money and I I left. <laughs> when I came home, while I was unloading this thing, it was almost crumbling in my hands and that's when I saw the crap that I had bought. And I said, hey, it doesn't matter. I paid 40 euros, but might have a good CRT, let's test it. And it had a heated cathode chart so I don't know it it can work like this it probably works it has fantastic emission uh, but I could repair this I could make some new pieces of wood and I could put some filler on some areas but I would have to paint it and I just it will it would be a massive task and it would just never look the same as the original so it will probably end up in the parts shelf I don't think anybody will want to buy this it's completely destroyed you see it's got a lot of mold inside So yeah, and today is Sunday and I don't have anything to do so I decided to come here and try and power this thing up. Uh, I'm not expecting this to work or to do basically anything because it's like you saw, it's loaded with these black, black tar capacitors and they just short so probably more than likely it will not do anything until I completely recap it which I'm obviously not going to do but I, I thought about just trying to power it up and uh, see if at least it produces high voltage so this is the line that went to the filament transformer and this is the 6.3 volt line that they 
have wired up to the CRT socket. Everything is disconnected because we will not be needing this, not be needing it. We will try and run it without the CRT. This is our yoke here, it's connected. Somebody has put some copper around the fuses just to bypass them. I'm going to leave that. If this thing shorts or whatever, I just don't care. It's I'm not expecting anything. So, got here our power switch is bypassed. Because all of these controls are completely frozen. I've managed to turn all the potentiometers to the right because I don't know which one of those is brightness. Whoa, brightness, huh? Why am I talking about brightness if we don't have a CRT connected? Oh, how stupid. <laughs> well, when I power up an old set, usually I turn all the controls to the right, with the exception of the volume, but in this case, won't make any difference. But anyway, got here are the plug, and here we go. That tube is lighting up. If that tube is lighting up, the others should be lighting up as well. There we go. Let's try and connect our speaker mm -hmm. mm. nothing on the speaker Ooh, that's strange alright so it's dead we have filaments and nothing else, so let me try and figure out what is missing here. Alright, like I was saying, we are on DC volts, and I'm checking main filter caps. I have no voltage on any of them. Let me go to AC, that wouldn't make much sense, but nothing so nothing on the on the main filters but we have filaments all right so here's our power supply got our four rectifier tubes one two three four they're all connected in parallel so here is our takeoff point for the filaments so we we have voltage arriving here and then we have a bunch of 90 ohm resistors and then we got our filters right here so none of these has any voltage including this one which is C103 let me confirm that so where is that uh, C103 C103 there it is so yeah I checked that one too let me check that again So it's the bottom one, it has a resistor going to C104, which I can confirm. Yeah, nothing. And these are 
these are directly heated rectifiers B19 118 121 oh no oh no no they have their own they have their own string 119 120 122 123 and then B6 what is B6 is that the CRT no CRT is 21 hmm. so our suspect could be either one of these resistors or these four had to be open so all four of them had to be open or these two had to be open uh, that's weird huh. all right let me clean the, the oh boy ah now oh, that's interesting right there Come on, baby. Squirt that juice. Jesus, I can feel the heat from here. Looks like I forgot the damn thing plugged in. <laughs> oh, boy. Let me see what, what part is that. What capacitor is that? Okay, so here's the back. So it looks like it's C C102. 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 Yeah. There's our usual suspect cross the line capacitor. <laughs> looks like it has squirted its guts no longer a capacitor all right so well where was I going oh I'm going to clean the glass of these four tubes and see if they if they are glowing if they are glowing I'm going to check these two resistors and then these four this is weird it could be wire broken here or something or maybe one of them has a bad filament yeah if one of them has a bad filament they will not warm up or it could be this B6 tube what is this B6 tube could be that white cap that's on the chassis B6 B6 where are you B6 oh yeah UF80 there's our white cap there's our white cap sucker. There it is. UF80. Let me confirm. Yep. UF80. Huh. Just gonna. How the hell am I going to find the UF80? I don't have any of this. I don't want to damage the UI85 rectifiers if they are still good. Alright, let me go in the house and try to find one of these. Okay, so I cannot find any UF80 tubes. I have a couple of radios that use this tube, but I don't want to be opening up working radios. Possibly messing something up. Because with this old stuff, sometimes you touch it or sneeze next to it and it just stops working. So I don't want to open any working radius to remove any tubes. I don't have a spare tube, so I've looked it up. This is a 19 volt tube and these are 38 volts each. So 19 volt dividing by 4, which gives us about... 5 volts or 4 four volts extra on each one of these don't think that's I don't think that will blow any filament up at least 
in a short period so I have bridged the filaments there I don't even know if those two pins are the filaments usually on vacuum tubes those are the filament pins but there's a chance that I'm wrong so we're just going to go for broke and see what happens if I can grab the power cord all right three two one kaboom Maybe I should remove this and check for voltage there. All right, AC. See if I don't get shot. Some of you will laugh if you see me taking a. Stupid multimeter probes don't fit on the holes of the the tube socket, so I need to flip it around. Wait a moment. All right, so I, I don't know where I got the idea that the filaments were the two were these two pins adjacent to the the gap. Uh, that usually happens on CRTs. But it's not the case with this tube, and it's not the case with some tubes, at least European style tubes. So forget that I said that. Got the filaments now bridged. You see that black wire and the yellow wire going to the valve. Those are the filament wires, the two pins that I had bridged before actually have a resistor going from one to the other uh, I could get the I could grab my tube manual but I just I'm just too lazy right now to do that so let me bridge this properly stupid Chinese alligator clips all right, let's see what capacitor will pop right now. Nothing. All right, let me investigate a little further. All right, uh, I ran out of battery on the phone, but we're back in business now. So what happened meanwhile was that I tested continuity on all the four rectifier tube filaments, and we actually have this one open and that one open the other two are good uh, not sure how that happened but yeah so uh, so I just put in a diode it's really not recommended but uh, I put in a diode there and we will see what blows up alright so I'm measuring B plus on the first filter cap. So here we go. 
so 280 seems a little bit excessive but there's still no current draw let's just see plus a so yeah. it's dropping we have some crackling from the speaker It's dropping a lot, which would indicate it. All right, so we don't have any high voltage as expected. So I'm just gonna check voltages on the horizontal output. This is the grid. It should be negative, and it is, but too low. It should be about negative 30 volts. It's negative 0.7. This is G2, which, which should be 120 volts, which it is. Cathode is grounded. So, uh, it's either a bad horizontal output or the oscillator is not running. Well, I don't hear the, the whistle, so I'm going to say that the, the oscillator is not running. So, uh, let me unplug it. There's our oscillator, B13, it's a PCF80, I think I have one of those here in the garage, so B13, where is it, it's here, so it's next to the, next to the high voltage gauge, it's this one here, Let me change that tube. Oh, of course, it's buried inside of the high voltage gauge. And the horizontal output is getting really hot. If you run it like this for, for a long time, it will burn it burn up really quick. It's, it's melting. It smells like hot. PCF80. See if I have one of these. Alright, so here's the old tube, and after cleaning the dust, we can see it's also a, a white cap. So. Uh, Gone. When I say it's a white cap, uh, I mean it's gone to air. Right, so we got a, another tube in there. Here we go. Get our high voltage probe here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Got something. Ooh, that's promising. 
Okay. No, let me let me put this back in the cabinet and see if it produces a raster. All right. So we have good high voltage here. We have a nice pulsating arc from here and we have a nice steady AC arc there on the cap of the rectifier all the voltages seem to be here we have about 200 volts on the cathode and we have about 60 on the G1 so that's consistent with what I see here so we have our plus 2 to a 2k resistor going to the cathode then we have a voltage divider and uh, voltage dividing network with the brightness potentiometer going to G1 so G1 is supposed to be lower than the cathode which is what we have here we have high voltage we have cathode we have G1 we should have something on the screen and I tried rotating the rotating and moving the ion trap magnet around no effect the magnet is still working, it's still magnetic, so that's not the problem. So what I'm going to try and do is to tie the cathode of the CRT to ground and try that again. If that doesn't work, I'm going to say it's a dead CRT. Although the emissions on the tester test good, but all right let's see all right so i've cut the wire that goes from the cathode of the crt to the actual circuit of the set i grounded the piece of wire here and it's connected to the crt socket this is the cathode pin it's grounded and we're going to plug it in There's the oscillator starting. Nothing. Okay, so I have my hand on the magnet. Okay, I see something there. Check that out. That's not oh. flip it. Come on. was working for a moment hmm. all right there it is I actually had the yoke flipped 90 degrees that was interfering with the operation of the ion trap magnet I don't want to run this for any amount of time like this, but there you have it. We have illumination on the screen. Now I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I don't feel like recapping it and repairing it with a cabinet in this condition. But it's also a shame that everything is working. And yeah, I don't know. The vertical is probably, the collapsed vertical is probably just capacitors, but in the CRT is very bright. Uh, I don't know. 
I really don't know. Anyway, here's our moldy, rotten 1950s Philips set, which we might see on a later video or not. <laughs> that depends. See you next time.